Hey, welcome back military journeyman. This is part three of the rescue swimmer video series. If you want to see the full playlist, I'll include it in the description box below. Let's just jump on into it. Now, now let's talk about, so you've, you've made it, you're an aviation survival technician. Um, what, what can you expect showing up to your first unit? Yeah, so so you've graduated rescue swimmer school. You think, yeah, I'm a, I'm a rescue swimmer now. It's like, hold up, no, you're not. So when you show up to your unit, you're just you're just we call it the boot third. You know that term, but but you're you're just at a rescue swimmer school. You still have to get qualified on your airframe. You with which you have to get qualified on the helicopter that you're going to fly in, which is like a hundred page syllabus, and you have to learn everything about this aircraft. Once you do that. You have to uh, get qualified as a helicopter rescue swimmer, which usually entails a ground portion and a flight portion, and uh, and about six flights, two of which are in the dark and, and they're rescue scenarios that people, um, the standardization team in that specific shop will put on for you. Once you do that, you're going to go to uh, emergency medical technician school, which is in Petaluma, California, and that's a six-week program. And... Upon graduation of that, you're going to have to take a test called the National Registry of EMTs, and you have to pass that test. Now, once you pass that test, you're going to go to Advanced Helicopter Rescue School, where um, that's kind of like the final the final school that you go to, and it's just all these uh, really cool scenarios where we do cave rescues and cliff rescues and high surf rescues. Once you do all those things, you'll be a qualified rescue swimmer. So the whole process of graduating rescue swimmer school and finishing all that usually takes um, at least a year. You know, maybe people don't, <laughs> don't realize it's like when you graduate from rescue swimmer school, you're, you're not just jumping out there and saving no. people and saving lives. Uh, so what, what is like a day to day operation, uh, as a rescue swimmer, as like someone that, uh, maybe is like a, a third class or a second class. Yeah. So day to day operation. So, I kind of break it down in, in, in a weekly operation because that kind of paints the picture better, I think. So so what so in a week you'll probably stand one or two duty days. And on a duty day, <clears throat> you're gonna be the rescue swimmer that's on call for 24 hours. So your job is basically it's kind of similar to being at a fire station, I guess, where if you're on duty, you basically just maintain your gear and wait for calls, um, help out around the shop. So those are your duty days. On your non-duty days, we're, um, we're still flying. We're uh, doing, we do a lot of training. We do a lot of EMT training. We do a lot of physical fitness training. Um, we go to the pool a lot. And uh, we also maintain all the life support and survival equipment that's on all the aircrafts. So, so when you show up to your unit, there's you said you're gonna have duty days uh, who 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 gets to really kind of be the one that gets to maybe go out there when there's a mission so that's just the rescue swimmer on duty right so uh if uh if there's seven people in your shop you usually be on a one in seven rotation all right it's not really not that black and white but that's kind of simplifying it so once a week you'll stand duty and if if a, if a mission pops up, you're going to be the person on that mission. The next day, if you don't have duty and someone else does and a mission pops up, they're going to be on that mission. So just, just to kind of, just to kind of clear the, uh, clear the confusion. So it's not being a rescue swimmer. Isn't like, uh, the guardian, you don't just get a call on your cell phone and then you show up and you have to rescue someone or how, how does that work? That does happen sometimes, but, but, um, if you're on duty, you're usually uh, right there on base, um, attached to the base for that day. But uh, I've definitely gotten phone calls before, like, "Hey, we're setting out a second or a third helicopter. We have, you know, a plane crash, and we need multiple helicopters." And I've flown out with multiple helicopters before and pulled multiple people out of the water with just a bunch of helicopters down, just pulling people out of the water. Um, so, so it does happen. It happens like the guardian sometimes, but not every day. So what about like a full career in the coast guard? So let's say you, you graduate from rescue swimmer school and you've, you've, uh, you're now a third. What, what can you expect as a, uh, AST once you start maybe moving up in the ranks? 
Yeah, you, as you move up in the ranks, you actually probably just get uh, a little bit more responsibility every time you move up. Um, you'll go from from kind of having small responsibilities, like maybe being the, the new guy, you manage what we call managing the pump shop. We take care of all the dewatering pumps to, to maybe th th then you, you, you've been a rescue swimmer for a few years. Now you're going to be in charge of uh, ordering all the gear for all the rescue swimmers. And then uh, you're in a few more years. Now you're going to be um, actually in charge of the duty schedule and the whole shop and how maintenance runs in the shop. And then uh, a few years from there, you're kind of just taking a, taking a management role. But what's really unique in our job field is it's uh, the chiefs are jumping out of helicopters too. So it doesn't just come to a point where you just like stop doing rescue missions and now you've just got, you know, you're just letting all the seconds and thirds doing the mission. Um, for some people it does, uh, who, who it kind of just depends on what path you want to go on, you know? So, so typically if, if you're a E7 or even E8 and below, <clears throat> excuse me, you could still stand, um, rescue swimmer duty. I don't think any of our master chiefs stand rescue swimmer duty. Um, but, uh, but definitely senior chiefs and below are standing rescue swimmer duty. Now, maybe one of the big things that isn't really maybe talked about, but is uh, I imagine that there's got to be a lot of injury if you're doing this job for a long period of time. You know, it's very physically demanding, you know, on the on the helos uh, with the missions and training all the time. Um, is this really kind of a job that that is maybe easily sustainable for maybe 20 plus years? I wouldn't say it's easily sustainable for 20 plus years. I would say it, it's, it's definitely doable. People do it. Um, but injuries are huge in our job. Every one of us has got a lot of injuries. Um, a, a lot of us have knee injuries, shoulder injuries, back injuries, uh, all attributed to either just training so hard or getting ripped out of the water at night by the helicopter. Um, a bunch of things can lead to injuries, but uh, we're really trying to mitigate that right now by implementing programs to uh, increase the longevity of the rescue swimmer. So we just created a, well, we didn't just create it, but but it's it's growing. Um, we have a school called Operational um, Operational Fitness Training, and it's a it's basically just the latest and greatest techniques of taking care of yourself and your body and smart ways to physically train. And we invite all the rescue swimmers to come to this training. Um, so we have 50 spots open every year. We do this right here at Elizabeth City, right where we do the A school. We invite 50 rescue swimmers a year and we put on a, a really cool five day training seminar um, of how to safely train and take care of your body. And uh, yeah, that's one of the things we're doing to, to help help out our rate. Now, you know, it's kind of it's kind of said like being a rescue swimmer is probably one of the um, coolest jobs because it's like you're you spend a lot of the day, um, you know, training, working out, and then you're also uh, you're also doing some really cool missions and do, being involved in a lot of high intensity, you know, with the hurricanes and uh, we we see a lot of you guys in the news and publicity. Uh, but is this is this a job that people? stay in for just like their, their whole career or is it pretty pretty even keel where people are getting out um because i know that the retention rate um uh, or the advancement for rescue swimmer is is pretty competitive yeah the advancement is competitive because it, it like you said it's such a good fun job um where we get to go out we get to go into work and hang out with our friends and work out and jump out of helicopters um it's hard to to want to get out and leave that job so people generally stay in the the job which is good but it makes it hard like you said to advance because everybody's trying to advance so i mean it kind of it, it runs like a triangle where you only have a very few people on top and you have a lot of people down below and everybody throughout their career is trying to get to the top and it you know bottlenecks and uh it gets a lot more competitive so you've got a lot of rescue swimmers studying really, really hard, um, to take that test every six months or every year to, uh, to get the next rank. Is, is that a pretty common thing for rescue swimmers to, uh, get higher tenured out and higher tenure for those that don't know, it's like people that aren't, uh, that aren't able to advance in time. No, it's not common for rescue swimmers to be higher tenured because, um, 
like 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 you may know there's there's uh exceptions to every rule and in the rescue swimmer rate we're having so few people graduate rescue swimmer school that we don't have enough rescue swimmers to man all the duty rescue swimmer duty that we have around the country so we're getting granted waivers for higher tenure because our advancement is 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 pretty tight and pretty tough so um if you want to stay in you could usually stay in they'll they'll grant waivers up until 20 years and then you could retire at whatever rank that you made it to um and obviously that rule is subject to change now what hap- now what happens with like hurricanes i know that there's been you know every hurricane season there there's always something and the uh, uh rescue swimmers and the coast guard is is uh, definitely a highlight on the news how do, how does that work let's say you're stationed in um, you know, Connecticut or something in New England, Cape Cod or whatever, and there's a hurricane. How how do you get to uh, end up as a part of the action? Yeah, that's a good question. So yeah, I, you know, you see the news every year. We have a couple of really bad hurricanes, and basically, what happens is that unit, the units close to where the hurricane hit, they uh, will hit will request extra forces. Is what they call it, request for forces, and basically. Each shop will send a few rescue swimmers to go and help out, and and the nearby units will fly in their helicopters. So they just make this giant, basically this giant rescue station, and they've got eight helicopters flying at a time with fully crewed, um, and you're just flying on search and rescue duty for like five days straight. Is is that something that like anybody can volunteer for, or is that just like uh, people p- pick who they who they go? And how do, how does that work uh, for um, in in the rescue swimmer field? Because obviously, um, th- there's probably going to be people that are maybe more fit than others. Maybe some people that are a little bit maybe better prepared. Um, how how does that how does that work for the people that maybe aren't as maybe qualified or fit for that type of uh, job? Right. Yeah. So like if you're, I mean, the more prepared you are, the more likely it is that you're going to be sent there. Um, So, so one of the things is you do have to be qualified, right? And and that's a term we throw around in the Coast Guard a lot, but, but as for a rescue swimmer uh, to be qualified, you have to have taken a PT test within the last three months. You've had to have flown within the last um, three months and, and uh, done training flights and things like that. But, uh, but there, the shops will generally send people who I don't want to say less experienced, but, but in the shops, we try to send the younger folks to go do really cool things like that because a lot of the older swimmers have gone through it already and seen it. So they send the younger swimmers to go and uh, get a little taste of the action. So it's almost like a, uh, a part of the, the culture. It's like, okay, now it's your turn to, you know, kind of jump in and, and be a part of the spotlight and, get to do the real cool like high intense missions yeah. that's very cool 100 percent, yeah now let's say you you made it you you you've become a rescue swimmer but let's say maybe there's just the coast guards environment maybe the the that type of schedule isn't really for you and you get out um what type of uh jobs or what type of experience or position would you might be able to get yourself lined up for after you get out like being an it um you know we're, we're we have a lot of positions for like big companies that um that maybe are trying to recruit you because they they know you have that type of experience how, how does that work for uh rescue swimmers hope you guys like this video if you did give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already if you're enjoying these just smash that like button for me let me know that you are enjoying these conversations if you want to see the full interview of this series i'll include it right here or if you want to keep watching something else you can watch this right here until next time peace out